Hello everybody and welcome back here at Adobe Live with yours truly. I am Clady and I'm super excited to hang out here with you for how to number two today. Today we're going to be talking about mock-up and learning how to create professional mock-up using Illustrator and Photoshop together. Our powerhouse of Creative Cloud, our beautiful apps working together. But first of all, let me welcome all of you here. So I can see the chat pretty active and that's the way I like it. Party, partying, partying during Adobe Live. That's pretty much every time that I go and I have to come here for a stream. I'm like, I'm just going to go and have fun with this wonderful community. So let's start by saying hello to those of you who are already in the chat. Christelle, what's up? Steve, ciao. Um, Ferry saying, by the way, hi, Ferry. I use Claudie's name for my English school test when I have to make an application <laughs> as a graphic designer. <laughs> Told you y'all, it's a party. So funny, so funny, Ferry. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Umacron, uh, Cody Bear in the chat, helping us out, sharing all the clickable link in the chat. If you're watching from YouTube, come and join us on Behance behance.net slash live or be.net slash live. That's the place where I can answer to your questions live. And as I say, and I will never be tired to say, this is a safe space to learn together. So use this time during the live to sharpen your skills in Illustrator and Photoshop. I'm here to show you how to do wonderful things with these beautiful apps. So take your space here and ask questions. Yesterday, we went from Illustrator to uh, InDesign and Photoshop, tackling all our graphic design how-to questions. Paloma, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's actually a jacket that I got from Greece uh, this summer, but I'm really, really happy that you enjoyed it. Fantastic. Let me know where you're watching from. I can see Jose de Leon from Puerto Rico. Oh, I'm so jealous. I'm streaming currently from Manchester, UK, but let me know. I'll keep my eyes in the chat. Frank, RB, RB, what's up? We lost Alberto. Someone go and call him. We're missing Alberto here in the chat. Let me know also in the chat if this is the first time that you're joining Adobe Live uh, so I can tell you a little bit more. But Let's jump into my screen because I want to give you a little bit of a recap if today is uh, your first day uh, with me here doing how to make a mock-up. Um, oops, here we are. So if it's the first day, I just wanted to jump on the other side of the screen. Here we are. Uh, I want to show you a little bit of a recap of what we've done yesterday. I had some questions on my um Instagram on uh, pretty much how to create the layer comp. So don't worry, as I said, you can watch the replay, but today I was going to take it a little bit slow and I'm going to show you how to create the different, uh, the different mockups together. We have a uh, California in the house, Chicago, Dallas, Canada. Beautiful. I love, uh, I love to see our international community. So let's get started from where we left it yesterday. And we're going to talk about the discover panel in just a moment. But before we do so, I'm just going to put it on the side and show you what we have done. So yesterday we started by these uh, fictitious logo that I created. Potentially, maybe I'm going to use it for my, uh, for my shop for things like pillows. And I should have had the pillows here somewhere. Hopefully I will find it. If not, if not, you can go and see it in yesterday. So we created a, a copy and mock-up of the pillow uh, that we have uh, designed. So I'm literally looking within my desk to see where the pillow is gone. It literally disappeared. Maybe some, oh, maybe it's behind my back. Here it is. <laughs> I was actually using the pillow. So <laughs> we went from Illustrator and you can recognize this graphic is the graphic that you see over there in my canvas, in my artboard in Illustrator. And the all the point is, if you're starting your business and if you're a designer and you want to sell products like a pillow like that, that you've designed it uh, with your graphics, how do you promote it and now you push it and before actually spending money in producing stuff like that. So the way to go is to create mockups that will allow you to promote your products 
and showcase it professionally in the real world as if it was a realistic pillow and people then can order and there are plenty of printers that will literally accept uh, your print per order so you'll never um, waste any money uh, by printing stuff that doesn't sell and you're just going to print Per order now a quick tip when you do stuff like that and that can be literally a pillow a mug a notebook anything really uh, my quick tip is to make sure to let people know that usually there is a little bit more of a turnaround time because the item is made specifically for them and also they will have maybe the opportunity to uh, add some edits maybe their name and personalize it which is a nice fair trade when you're giving a little bit more of a turnaround time um so <laughs> christine christelle said i love this pillow well probably should have bring it back in sale i have made a ton of pillows in the past that's sometimes you know when i was starting uh, my career as a designer i used to just I draw a lot and have all these graphics that I didn't know what to do with it and I just started to chuck it on pillows and notebooks and that's how I started by just selling products and creating mock-ups before selling them to make sure that they will sell perfect let me know if there is any question if not uh, Monica can you name some printers online sure so I know that for stickers um, there is and for a bunch of other stuff I use the guys at awesome merchandising uh i don't know if they are worldwide or if it's just the uk so bear with me with that but i've used them before uh otherwise red bubble or threadless which i think threadless is more specialized in textiles super fun cute t-shirts that you can use um so yeah red bubble is the one that i use a lot um and again otherwise awesome merchandise and if i think of others uh, i'll let you i'll let you know but check your local printers check your local printers because they will also guarantee a uh, easier turnaround and you can actually check the product and don't forget always make sure to get your samples order samples before you're selling so you know what your clients are getting perfect cody berry say great resource for fabric and wallpaper is spoon flower beautiful fantastic right so let me go ahead and uh, uh, show you where we were at yesterday so before we do that actually let me jump real quick in photoshop so yesterday we created our mask for the pillow and at the moment i left it white um it's over here but we're gonna go ahead and start to fill it and then we're gonna uh, do a little bit of a catch up uh, in order to work with layer comp so i can go a little bit more slow with layer comp but uh, for those of you that are like what are you talking about where is your mock-up so make sure to go ahead and watch yesterday video in order to and the replay in order to learn how to create a smart object which is this bad boy over here that contains our graphics and in order to as we say the smart object is one of our best friends when working in photoshop because is a container that will allow us to place in multiple images and effects and graphics so in order to access it simple double click on it and you will see the photoshop will launch a new window that is actually the smart object so what we did yesterday was using the warp tool to make sure that this square was adherent to the size of our pillow and then all we're left to do is to simply click and drag the uh, graphic from our libraries and that's something else that we did yesterday we spoke nice and loudly about the beauty of using creative cloud uh, libraries creative cloud libraries will allow you to store organize and share your content but most importantly not only you can share with your colleagues you can access it anywhere anytime from any app part of the creative cloud subscriptions and also you can simply edit your graphics directly jumping from one app to the other so you can keep sharp focus on your creation so let's say for example that you change your mind on this asset in particular that we just dragged from the library all you have to do this is a vector file all you have to do is to right click on it and select on edit and you will see that automatically illustrator will open up with this uh file so this file is not the original as you can see is actually called uh artwork 7 because that's the name of the artwork as it's, it's saved in the libraries uh and then cc etc and that's all the code that is behind it um then if we go back here that's the original one it will stay the same so the original of our original drawing will never change but the asset that is linked to the creative cloud uh, and you will see here in the cloud can be edited so for example uh, this is now a mask and i'm going to double click on it in order to access isolation mode you can change uh, for example you know that's something that can be done on request you know maybe select a color a specific color uh, and you can change the color of one of more of these little illustrations so just maybe something like that um or i kind of like it just 
with uh, um, two colors over there. So yeah, we have a little bit of an alternate of uh, orange and reds and black. And again, that can be just an option. We can go back and make a copy or go back and create another one. But we will see once I press Command S on Mac or Control S if you're working on a window, it will save and will automatically update inside your library. So if we go back into our original Illustrator file, we haven't modified our design. Our original design was still there, nice, preserved and intact. The one in, the, in uh, LinkedIn, the um, artboard again called Artwork 7 will change and surprise, surprise, the one inside Photoshop, I haven't done anything. I just simply went back into Photoshop. Every is already up to date with a brand new color. And all we're left to do is to press Command S or Control S to save. And we jump back into our pillow and you will see that we have the new updated mockup with a new color. So what happens if we do not access now the, the smart object? So uh, let's go ahead and close the smart object here. So we're still in Photoshop, Command S to save. Just make sure that we help our computer to stay on track with us. Again, all I have to do is to press Control 7 and edit, and it will open up again the same file. And if we're not happy with it, you're like, you know what? I like it the way that it was looking before. I like it black and white, more minimal, nicer. Nobody's buying these colors. Fantastic. Select it. Uh, make sure that you just select the illustration again, enter the isolation mode, uh, and select everything that you want to change in terms of colors. So let's go ahead and select our red items over there and change them into black. And again, Command S to save and command w or control w to close that specific file uh, and once we go back here it's updated inside our uh, file the reason why it's not updated inside our photoshop file and that's why i wanted to show you this is because we are outside of our mockup so make sure to double click again to uh, your smart layer in order to uh, be before performing these changes so it will be updated and when it remain updated. And the reason why you can see that there is an issue here, uh, and I want to point that out for you. So if it ever happens, you know what's going on, is that we have a little uh, error coming through inside our um, little icon. So we have an icon and I'm going to show you back when we're working with smart objects, this is the icon that tells us, hey, you're working with a smart object. This is a very special layer. Work as a container and allows you to make edits and apply any sort of distortion to the image without uh, without um, impacting the original data. So in a non-destructive way, preserving our image data, that's the icon. And when we work with uh, images or graphics linked from our Creative Cloud in the same location, we have a little cloud and that's telling us that we're working with uh, an element that is from and that is linked to our uh, library so you will see here that now we have a little issue there um, from our uh, library which will allow us to uh, notice right away that uh, there was an issue with our linked object so our linked object is now uh, not linked anymore so all you can do here just simply bring it back and you have your original file and you'll see that the cloud is restored and we're all happy again with our files. Now, if you end up rasterizing these files, so if you right click on it and for example, click on rasterize or convert it into a smart object, whatever you wanna do with it, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and rasterize it just to show you the little icon will disappear, will come out. So once the little icon disappear, you cannot ever bring it back in terms of items. So if I now go and edit the artwork again, like I did before in Illustrator, it will not be updated inside our library because the object is now unlinked. We just flatten our graphic inside Photoshop and is not we're not working with a cloud, uh, Creative Cloud library item assets anymore. Fantastic. So once we've done so, I'm going to go back and show you that now our main mockup is already updated. If you have any issues when you make edit, uh, if you have any issues when you make edit to your smart objects and for whatever reason they're not displaying inside your mockup, remember that it might just simply be that you have not pressed command save. You need to save your smart object, the status, the visibility status of your smart object to make sure that it gets updated inside your mockup. Fantastic. Let me see if there is any question in the chat. Everybody's saying hello. Tarcisio. Hi, Tarcisio from Sicily. Ciao. Welcome back. Bentornato. Uh, nice to see you here. 
Let's see if there is anybody in the chat. I'm just going to move back to see if there is any question. Monica, thank you for your tips. You're very welcome. Um, beautiful. Yes, it looks like everybody just saying hello. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, to ask. And again, we're going to be back with how to Put a heart in the chat if you're enjoying the show. It's just brand new here at Adobe Live. Um, and if you have any suggestion or if there is anything that you want to learn how to create in uh, with the Adobe Creative Cloud apps in graphic design, please let me know. Either if it's a portfolio, editing images, creating layouts, illustrating, whatever you want. This is the time so you can directly let me know what you want the how-to to be about. So share the love, share the love and let me know, share some uh, information if you want to learn something speci specific. My eyes are on the chat on behance.net slash live right now in order to uh, see what you want to learn. Right, so let's jump into our layer comps and I'm going to take it a little bit slower today uh, and then just so, to give you an heads up, I'm going to go and move into a more complex mock-up. So we're gonna tackle, first of all, the leaflet, and then hopefully if we have time, we'll take a care of the label as well. And another quick thing, uh, there is a mock-up available for you for free if you head to my website at imcloudy.com slash, I think it's freebies or resources. I mean, I don't even know my website. imcloudy.com slash freebies will bring to your uh, to this page where you can download an iPhone wallpaper mockup that's already made. And again, the beauty of making mockup is that you can also sell them. I'm here and I'm very uh, thankful to be here with you guys. So I'm super happy to give that for free. All the content that you have on my website is for free. You can find a lot of different assets um, and for different events and videos and Adobe Live and replays. You can go ahead and browse it. But the one that I wanted connected to this stream that I wanted to highlight for you because it's for free and easy to access is the iPhone wallpaper mockup. So if you ever create any graphics for mobile, that's the place where you can use it right there. Fantastic. So let's jump back into our smart object and let's talk about layer comp. So layer comp will allow you to have different images and switch between the content and the composition inside a smart object without having to go and do the game of opening the smart object back and forward. How do we do that? So oh, I can see some hearts in the chat. Thanks, Andrea. <laughs> Thanks, Shelby, Christelle, Monica. Uh, fantastic. Thank you so much for your love. Ashra Fool, nice to see you. Fairy, where is my heart? Come on. <laughs> I'm just joking. But come on, let's now and uh, focus on this on the layer comp. I know that that was a specific question about it. A few of you reached out on my Instagram, uh, which is at I am cloudy. If you have any question, that's the place where you can uh, uh, direct message me in order to have any question after the stream. Uh, so what I want to do here is to double click and make sure that I am now inside our smart object. And then from here, as you can see, I already dropped different assets. So I have this one here, the one that we've seen before. Then I have another, uh, which has m more uh, of this pattern. And then we can also have a color in the background, just like so. And then there is also uh, the logo eventually that we can use. But I'm just going to start with two, not to make it confusing. Uh, maybe we can have different options of color because that's one of the realistic things that may happen. So uh, what I'm going to do here is to start by with our first graphic. And I want to show you that the fact that we have a checkerboard pattern uh, inside our layer thumbnail means that our background is transparent. So whatever is in black is showing, our illustration is showing, but then we have a, a transparent background. If you want to retain a, a transparent background, that's completely up to you. If not, make sure to create a, a background of any color you want in order to allow that uh, contrast with the background. And once you're happy with the way that your image look, all I'm gonna do here is to head under window and then select layer comps. Every panel inside our beautiful Creative Cloud apps lives under the, uh, the window menu. So that's if you ever see any panels inside my workspace and you cannot find it inside yours. Remember, window is the place to go in order to bring up the one that you want. Make sure that you click on it, <laughs> not just like I did. I actually um, click on layers. So if you click once and they have the tick, they display. If you click on them like I just did, they will disappear. But here we go. That's our layer comp panel. 
And once you have the visibility, so whatever is showing inside our canvas area, uh, all you have to do is to click on the create new layer uh, comp, which is our square with a plus icon, and we can name it artwork one. And I'm going to also use black and white to remember that that's in black and white. And you can record, that's almost like a picture of what the canvas look like. You can record the visibility, position, appearance with the layer style and the section for a smart object. All I need is the visibility. So all I'm interested in, in order to uh, facilitate different looks of mockups within one single smart layer is the visibility. So make sure that visibility is ticked and then go ahead and click on OK in order to create our first artwork, one black and white. Then simply click on the eye icon to hide the visibility status of that specific artwork. And let's trigger another one by clicking on the eye icon and bring it into visibility. Click on the create new layer comp again, and I'm gonna call this one artwork two in black and white. So this is our second option for our pillow in black and white and so on and so forth. I'm just going to create another one with an orange background. And again, I'm going to click on this little icon here and I'm going to call it artwork to orange and click on OK. And then maybe we're going to create one in orange also for our first. And if you want to use the color of the brand that we have very, very neatly saved inside the, our libraries, once you have a solid color adjustment layer inside your panel, all you have to do is to head to our libraries. And here we have our colors from uh, our uh, design from our Emporium. You can simply click of any of the color that you have saved in order to um, apply it to your solid color. And if you're wondering how to bring this, this layer over here, so how do you bring this solid color adjustment layer inside your layers panel? Here it is. Click on the uh, adjustment layer, create new fill adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the la layers panel. And here it is. This is the first one, solid color. By clicking on it, you will see that uh, another, um, another solid colors comes up. Perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and press on cancel because I already have one and I'm actually pass it to the chat. The question, which color should we do? So I picked the orange. Um, we have pink, blue, orange or red. Which one do you think that it will look best with our design? I'm just going to give you a second there. And uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to try and save these uh, smart objects so we can have a quick look already on how it looks inside our mockup. Kind of like the blue. Uh, but I'm here to wait. I know there is a little bit of a delay in the chat. While you guys let me know in the chat, again, those are the color I wish would have always here because we do <laughs> our polls so you could actually vote. Go ahead and vote pink, blue. Or we already have orange, so pink, blue or red. Those are our options. Let me know in the chat and I'm just going to give you a second. In the meantime, while we uh, I'm going to be waiting for your answer, um, I'm going to go ahead and bring back our illustrator because I wanted to show you something that I mentioned yesterday, our brand new, beautiful discover panel. So the discover panel is a panel that uh, was already in Photoshop, but it just appeared like magic inside Illustrator after Max. Max had just passed, Max 2021. And uh, what we have here, uh, besides all the wonderful information that used to be inside the Learn panel, we have wonderful hands-on tutorial. And I'm very excited to show it because they're really, really wonderful tutorial, but also I've made one of them, which literally made my day. Having something that I created within the app is very, very exciting. Uh, my tutorial is called Hide Part of an Artwork with a Mask. It's free. You can ask, access it directly from the app. Simply click on the little uh, icon here in order to access it or also by clicking on help and look what happens. So once you go ahead and click on hide part of the artwork, those are super easy and easy to follow. All you have to do is to click on start tutorial. By the way, I'm keeping the eye on the chat. It looks like we have orange, 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 uh, blue, blue, pink, and red. So, so far we have more orange, but we already had the other orange. Come on, let me, let me know in the chat. Uh, so far we have Pretty much, I think orange is the one winning. The other colors are blue, pink, or red. Let me know in the chat while I show you the tutorial. 
So uh, the tutorial and Illustrator are super easy. Uh, they are broken down step by step. You can also click on this icon to show the location. If you're very new to the app, you will be able to learn right away how to select different items. Here it just tells you to uh, make a mask to in order to frame the artwork within the frame. So you just select it. And then every time you just simply click on next. So here we have to click on the rectangle tool and drag in order to create a rectangle. So I'm literally mimicking what it shows inside the little video. Uh, and then we go ahead and select both with the selection tool and then use our object, clipping mask and make. And boom, here it is. We already have our object masked. And then all we have to do is to head to object, arrange and send backward and you will see that now is behind our um, frame. And that's it. We have learned one new thing, one very specific thing. That's that's why they're called hands-on tutorial and uh, it's ready to go. You have participated. You can tell me if it's if, uh, it's been helpful or not. Uh, and there is so much more. You can learn about logo. You can learn all the superpowers of Illustrator. So I thought that it was worth to show. Fantastic. Let's go back to the chat and see what are the color vermilion and cerise. So we have the red and the pink blue, but with a pattern logo elements red okay blue okay pink pink uh, Cody I think I need your help <laughs> to make sure so we have three orange four orange two three pink pink is coming up isn't it pink two blue right so I'm gonna throw something else in the mix here I'm actually gonna make a copy of the artwork here uh, selected in order to access the isolation mode and select all our artworks and I'm going to create a copy in white because I think that if we're using um, a different color background that will look super cool to have actually have a, a white graphic so we cannot see it uh, but it's there I promise double click in order to ac uh, exit the uh, white background let me go ahead and see what I've done there probably change everything into white included the rectangle make sure to select the actual graphics that you wish to recolor just like so and I'm gonna click into white perfect here they are it's actually a little bit more of a gray rather than white but I actually like it I think we call it off white and then once you're done with it just simply click and drag inside your canvas here it is it's called Art artwork 12 all we have to do now is to go back into Photoshop. And once we uh, head to our rectangle, we also have the option to switch between the black and the white. I know I know that I didn't mention that before. So let's see how it's going to work maybe with the, the pink or the red. So all you have to do again is to simply click and drag. And you see that uh, our Creative Cloud Libraries updates as we go. Uh, so we're literally clicking and dragging and, sh and uh, things get updated as we go. So I kind of love this Mediterranean um blue and white color i'm actually quite liking that let's see a uh, suggestion from anika blue but with a pattern logo element Ooh, that's really really cool idea as well uh, so maybe we can bring another color right now and see the way that it looks like uh, but i mean you can spend the entire time that's the reason why i would say remember uh, i'm actually gonna close the vote right now it looks like we have between pink and blue, pink and blue, pink and blue. Um, I'm going to try it with the pink as well. Uh, but again, that's the reason why I strongly suggest to make a mock-up because you can literally create as many of these options as you want uh, and then without printing them. So you will actually uh, create the mock-up, put the mock-up on your website or on your Instagram, and you will see from there which one sell the most. Right. So let's go back to our uh, layer comp. I'm going to create one more, and this is artwork three because it's our white in blue and click on OK. And now that we created these different options, we can go ahead and press command S to save and then command or control W to close. And here we have the last status of our mockup, which was um, this blue. That's the last one that we save it with. But how do we access our layer comp? Now, the majority of people, and that's where everybody was asking me question, was heading back to the layer comps panel. No, that's not the place to go. You go back to the layer comps in order to create layer comps and of course do other things, but 
that is not the place where we access them. In order to access the different options that we create and look how cool it is. So right now I'm basically in the final mockup. All I have to do here is now head to our properties panel, making sure that your, our smart object is selected. And then from here, all I have to do uh, is to head here where it says rectangle one. The rectangle one was the original shape, was the name of the shape that we created, the rectangle, which was uh, the fabric that we wrapped around our uh, pillow in order to create uh, the uh, the mock-up. And here you'll be able to see this little drop-down menu with all our lovely layer comps there. So you can see that they automatically gets uploaded there and we can simply swap between one of the other. So I'm not accessing the smart object anymore. Photoshop is doing everything for me. And that's fantastic. Imagine if you're working with a client and that's their logo and that's their design that you made for them. And they're just sitting next to you. You don't even have to create a presentation. Or if you're working with your art director, all you have to do is to simply click on any of these images and sorry, any of these different layer comp uh, visibility that you have saved and you can very easily access each one of them. And it gets even more fun because you can also go ahead and I'm going to uh, hold the shift in order to create a group of these two elements. Here they are. That's the element of our smart object mockup and our background together. And I'm going to call it final look. And by doing so, you can right click inside your uh, on top of your layer and you can automatically export it now here here we have a quick export as a png if by any chance it for you it says export as a jpeg uh, there is a way in which you can change this setting this is a quick export which is super amazing so imagine how quick it is you simply go on the layer comp change the visibility to whatever else and then again right click on it boom a quick export as a png it's ready to go, ready to be exported. So you can export variation of the same mockup with different looks in just a click with a quick export. But let me show you if you want to swap it into a JPEG. Uh, I hope I remember that well. Uh, I believe you all you have to do is to press Command K or Control K if you're on Windows in order to access the preference panel. And let me see, it should be under file handling. Um, if I remember well, if not, we're going to have to have a little bit of a look together, maybe general. I know that's somewhere in here <laughs> where we handle our uh, our file. Let me know in the chat if you export makes sense, but export here it is. So quick export format. That was so intuitive. I'm so glad. Um, so again, command K or control K to access your preference panel. And then from the export tab, the very top settings will be your quick export settings. So that's what happens when you click on right click on your layer in order to export it. I have set it to PNG. You can set it to JPEG, GIF. You can keep transparency or not. That's completely up to you. Of course, transparency will retain only when you're working with PNG because JPEG will flatten the background. So any transparency will be trans uh, will be uh, set to white. So I, le I leave it to PNG. So I got the option. Um, and uh, uh, with JPEG, you will access a more compressed file. So it depends what you're doing and what sort of graphics you're exporting. Perfect. Once you make your decision, click on OK. And again, you'll be able to um, maybe it was worth it just to show you real quick. So uh, here, can you see quick export as a PNG? If I go back to our now, I know how to do it. Ex preferences and JPEG and click on OK, right click on it. And here it is, quick export has changed to JPEG. So depending on your job that you're doing, you can simply swap between any or the other. Biola, lovely to see you. Fergie, thank you so much for joining us here. Cesar, um, Ashraful is saying blue and white looks nice. Uh, fantastic layer comps and our boards are live savers. I completely, completely agree, Annika. Oh, <coughs> also, I'm so sorry. I don't ever know if I pronounce your name correctly. I apologize. I apologize if I don't. <laughs> I'm going to have a glass of water in the meantime. <clears throat> and here we are. So before we move forward, I also want to show you real quick <coughs> how to change the color of the pillow yesterday. Uh, we done that real quick, but let's use another image. We've been using this image uh, quite a lot. Um, before we move forward, let me remember if there are any things that I want to show. Yeah, so maybe last last tip that I want to show you uh, with this image before to, we move to another file is to really, really push the level of uh, uh, 
realism inside your mockup. You can do that by uh, selecting uh, your smart object or whatever is the layer with your images and then access the filter. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and access the liquify filter. With a liquify filter, will open up its own workspace. I want to make sure the show backdrop is selected and then you can use a specific layer. Uh, in this case, pillow image is my layer, so we can use it. And then we can also see uh, its visibility thanks to the opacity slider. So we can have a look at the way that our pillow looks just like so. And then I'm going to use uh, the forward uh, warp tool in order to, and I'm going to zoom in in here so we can really see what we're doing, in order to give a little bit of a tweak, because I know that we set the blend to multiply yesterday, and if you don't know where it is, I'm going to show you once we uh, get out of here. But what I want to do is just give it a little bit more of realism by following the creases of our pillow, because it's true that we see the shadows and the texture, but the graphic is still pretty, you know, flat and straight. And in reality, come on, I can show you in reality because we have the real pillow here. In reality, when you crunch the pillow, the graphic doesn't stay straight. The graphic just bends uh, because it bends with the fabric. So we want to be able to do that. It's actually very comfortable. <laughs> uh, we, we should be able to do that. And uh, again, if you ever feel like you overdid, sometimes I kind of overdo. It can just create this little bit of a too much uh, of a liquify, you can always use the reconstruct tool, which is located just right under the liquify. And you can head back to whatever just by clicking on it in order to reduce it and just kind of bring it back and tone it down a bit. Uh, I tend to overdo uh, a little bit with the liquify. I mean, I mean, as you can tell here, it looks like I overdid it on the top, but no worries, you can always reconstruct. So you can actually bring it back and just tone it down a little. Uh, maybe I'm just going to add it a little bit more here at the bottom where we have more creases. Again, I'm just going to move it. And all you got to do here is to simply click and drag in order to move the graphics, whatever you want and following, of course, uh, whatever is happening at the pillow. So here, maybe tuck it in a little on the side. And again, whatever, uh, whatever else is actually happening in terms of cre uh, creases. That's why it's so important to show the background. And remember, you can do that here by using show backdrop. So you actually have a guideline of where to apply uh, the liquify tool. Here it is. And you can set it to whatever you want. Fantastic. Uh, you can spend entire time to uh, finalize Ashraful said, wow, did you just print it right now? Yes. No, <laughs> no Ashraful, I printed it a while ago. I actually used to sell these pillows. Um, so um, I'm here to show you how you can create some very useful mock-up if you perhaps wish to sell your graphics as well. So before you sell them, you can just show a professional preview. Fantastic. I'm going to press on OK and automatically our liquify is applied. And here another beautiful feature of our smart object. As you can see, the smart object is applied to, sorry, the, the effect and the filter is applied to the smart object that allows complete control so we can remove it at any time and all our little tweaks will go away. Uh, you can also delete it. So we never, never delete or erase or modify your original image stays there uh, ready for us to go back and edit and change our mind as many times as you want. So we're always safe when working uh, with uh, with our uh, smart objects. Fantastic. Time to save this file, export it, export it and uh, use it for your website or for your Instagram in order to mm, use it as a promotion. And don't be afraid, like I literally sometimes put some stuff on my Instagram, even if it's not printed, uh, I just use it as a test. I'll be like, okay, you can do pre-sale, just let people know that it will take a little bit longer to receive their product if they end up ordering it. Or you can just taste people. You can um, actually gauge people's taste and see if they maybe like different colors or not. Fantastic. But now let's move on to another graphic, which we have here, because I want to show you something really cool in terms of changing colors. Let's move to this other graphic. Uh, this is an element with multiple pillows that I have found inside stock.adobe.com and accessing stock directly from our library. All I have to do is to right click on it and select edit. And as you will see, it will appear right away inside our Photoshop. Uh, Shelby, Adabra Cladi Drabra. I don't even say it. Adobe Cladi, da, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to say it, but that's Shelby. That's super cool. I just, I'm dyslexic. So that goes beyond my capabilities and my skills there. But I found it super fun. 
right? The reason why I want to show you this magic, magic um, tool here is the object selection tool that has got an upgrade on its own and is so wonderful, wonderful and so useful. So look what happened here. Um, all you have to do is to select your object selection tool. And once you click on it, make sure the object finder on the top of your options bar is ticked. Once you select object finder, you'll see that we have this double arrow and that's Adobe Sensei, which is Adobe artificial intelligent thinking, observing the image and looking at the different elements. And look what happens here automatically. Isn't that mind blowing? I know it's been there for a while now. It's nearly, I don't want to say here, nearly half a year that it's been there, but it still blows my mind. So we have a preview of the selection. We're not doing anything. Photoshop is doing everything for us. It's looking at the image, looking at the different elements, and you can select whatever you, which, whichever you want, which I think is super, super exciting. So all you have to do is to click on it and you will see the marching ends appearing because we have just created a selection. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can really see that happening. But the other parts of the image that you can select, they're still live and they're still ready to be selected. So all you have to do is to make sure that you hold the shift key in order to add more than one element to your selection. Isn't that mind blowing? Look how cool that is. So in just literally what, four clicks, maybe five, because we had to click on the object selection tool, we have created masks of our selection, multiple selection, pretty good, pretty good, well done selection, just so quickly. Shelby saying, would Adobe find the object if it was a different color? Absolutely, yes. So what I'm going to show you right now, uh, and that's a very, very good question. So what I'm going to do now is actually deselect some of this pillow and I'm going to change just the color uh, one at a time. So I wanted to show you that we can uh, select all of them, but I'm going to go ahead and press uh, the option key with any selection tool. We do not need the object selection tool. We can simply have the marquee tool here. And again, by pressing, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how the icon change. When I press options, it toggles uh, between subtract and addition. And addition. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, press option or alt if you're working on a, a Mac and click and drag in order to uh, erase anything that you want. And I'm just going to take it one at a time to change color. How do we change color? Very easy. We go back into our fill and adjustment layer, select solid color, and then we can apply any color we want. Let's stick with our blue for now that we can choose another color that we want. Click on OK. And all you're left to do here is to then uh, uh, select multiply in order to access that color. And of course, there are many blending modes. Multiply is the one that will guarantee uh, to see all the shadows coming through. And then what I usually do is also set my transparency to something like maybe 80, just to make it a little bit more realistic so it doesn't look like a web generated color, just to give a little bit more of that transparency coming up. Uh, so we already created one pillow of one color, then we can go back to our object selection tool, uh, select any of these other pillow. And by the way, it'll, the edges of these selection look a little bit um, jagged there. So let me show you how you can actually refine that before we move to the uh, further. So uh, all, you can do that at any time. I'm going to do that at the beginning here. Uh, sorry, going back to our mask, simply select our mask thumbnail. Our mask all will display in black and white. And as usual, whatever is covered with black will be hidden. So in this case, with the, when you create a solid feel, uh, it will infinitely, infinitely uh, cover our pixels of whatever color we have selected. And then we use our mask to narrow down the selection to the area, sorry, to narrow down uh, the solid color to the area that we have selected. And if you want to modify, like in this case, I notice that we have a little bit of those edges that I'm not happy with. Although the selection is spotless, just need to refine it a little bit. Simply select on it and then from the properties panel, you can access the, sel access the select and mask workspace. This workspace is super easy. It will allow you to uh, have some global refinement. So the first thing that I will do is to use the smooth slider in order to look at that. Look at that. Look at that in just like what three seconds. And I'm going to zoom in because I really want you to see what's happening here. Look at the edges, how smooth they went. So without the smoothing, they were a bit jacked and uh, sharp. Look at that. Here they are all sharp and a little bit unnatural especially for a soft pillow. So once we smooth them, 
in just a few seconds, they will be smoothened. And you can also use a little bit of feather uh, to blend the color with the color around it. Not too much, because otherwise, look at that, we start to lose and it just start to become more of a blur. Um, so be subtle with your effect and just simply click on OK. Fantastic. So once we're done with this mask, I'm going to go ahead real quick, head into the object selection tool uh, and then um, make sure that we select any of the object. If you're working quickly and the uh, image doesn't appear, you can always click and drag around a specific object that you wish to select in order to create uh, the selection. Again, you can uh, also uh, go back here and I'm going to go ahead and click on solid color to add another color. Uh, let's make it purple, pink, whatever color we want. Oh, I'm liking this yellow. And then again, make sure to multiply. Uh, and then we can go back and refine our mask by selecting the mask and selecting on select a mask. And again, I'm just going to make sure that it's smooth, just like so, and click on OK. Now, another quick way to refine the mask, I can say that it took a little bit of the wall. Real simple. Click on the mask, press on B to activate the brush tool. Use your uh, bracket to make sure that you um, select the size of your brush. And also here from the brush settings, you will be able to select also the hardness of your brush and of course the size and then simply click on your brush. Now, make sure that you have the mask selected. And if you paint in black, as I said, everything that is in black will be hidden. And then if you happen to make a mistake like I did, it looks like I went a little bit over. Simply use the X key on your keyboard to switch between black and white, between your fill uh, foreground and background. You can see here with the letter X, we are switching very quickly between black and white. That's a very useful shortcut. Oops, kind of go press X again, and then you can go ahead and refine your mask. Now I'm moving fast because time is ticking. I can't believe we have 10 minutes left. But what I want to show you here, let's say that that was the original image. And I'm actually going to go ahead and press Command J to duplicate uh, my image over there. And then uh, so we have a duplicate and I'm going to call this one original. And then I'm going to make this one copy. And what I'm going to do is actually merge this color. So I'm going to pretend that this is the original image, which has different pillows. So to merge the uh, the color, sorry, to merge different layers, select them and use the shortcut Control E uh, on a Windows. That would be Command E on a Mac. We'll merge them into one. And let's go back to uh, the uh, object selection tool. I believe the question was from Shelby. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and see what's happening. So if nothing happens yet, it's because um, we have Sensei that is thinking, it's just analyzing the image. Uh, and you can see that even if the object have a different color, they will be recognized as different objects. In fact, I believe the first example that I ever seen with Adobe was with like candles. I think it was um, the amazing Terry uh, that was showing us with the uh, candles. I think that was his first tutorial with these mind blowing items. But I'm just going to go ahead and see. Let's see if I have any specific image. And again, I'm just going to take let's do this. I'm actually going to take a screenshot over here of this image. Here it is. I'm just going to create a screenshot of this uh, image and just bring it inside our photo and see what happens here with our object selection tool. Uh, so we, we have layered different images, so we're really giving a, a little bit of a task, uh, but we shall see at, at the moment it's thinking, but we shall see that in just a second, and I want to show you another technique. Here it is. So it picks the two different phones right away. And if you want, you can also change the color of your selection by clicking on the gear icon. Here it is. You will be able to see your selection much better. Fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and delete this uh, uh, layer and I'm going to jump into another. So in this case, if you want to create multiple mockups for for your layers, exactly like we did before, create the rectangle and create the mockup for your for your pillow. Um, you can also use the same mockup if the pillow shape is the same. Um, look at this. I'm just going to try it real quick. Click and drag to bring your mockup there uh, and then press on command T to resize it. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, link, make sure that you link your mask and your mockup at the same time. Um, oh, it looks like we can't uh, because of our, um, we can because we have applied a warp. So I'm going to delete the mask real quick because we know that how quickly it is to create a mask thanks to our object selection tool. I'm going to roughly place uh, our 
decoration for our pillow above one of the new pillows. And what I'm going to do here is to then again, go back to the object selection tool, select our pillows. We can select it over here, head back to our smart object and boom, apply a layer mask. And here it is. Literally we we'll created a mock-up from another file, just simply because it was a similar shape and we were able to adapt it. And what I want to show you here is that how to create a copy in order to have a different smart object that look the same, but that can be updated with different content. So I'm just going to go that over real quick. And I'm afraid we won't have time for the, um, for the paper, maybe, maybe next time we're going to be, we're going to be together again. Um, so, uh, in order to create a copy, what happened if you just simply duplicate the layer, so you create a copy of the layer and then, um, we can just simply go ahead and move it. Oops. want to go ahead and move it, uh, on the other pillow, just like so. And again, uh, we need to make sure that we create a new mask for this pillow. Again, head back to the original image and create the selection. And then once you have created the selection, head to the second mockup and apply a mask as simple as that. Uh, now what happens if I go ahead and open my smart object and I change my start smart object, look to something. Um, let's say, let's just make it let's just change completely the color into something that we haven't used before red, for example, here it is and press command S uh, and we go back to our design. Um, maybe we have the layer comp applied. So let's go ahead and see what happened here. Why is not showing the, the original? Yeah. So remember if you, if you ever have issue with what uh, is showing on the layer mask, when you save, it might be because we have a layer comp, simply select don't apply layer comp uh, and then go back into your image and save. And it should be able to update it right away. Um, if not, let's just close these and let's try to do that again. Or maybe we can create a new layer comp. Let's see. Let's go ahead and create a new layer comp. I'm just going to call it red. Time is ticking uh, and save it. And then let's see if that happens here. Here we go. So we have now created uh, a new layer comp that has the new colors. Now what happened if we have changed this and uh, this one is not changed again is because we have the beauty of the layer comp showing or not showing in here. Uh, and again, this is set now to multiply. So the color will be affected by the color below. But what I want to show you is how to create uh, these different smart objects that contain different images. So they are completely unrelated to each other. Uh, how do you do that? So in order to do so, all you have to do is to right click on the smart object and make sure that we select um, create smart object via copy. So if you do that new smart object via copy will allow you to create a copy of the smart object, which that's why you should name your layer. So I'm going to call this one smart object one. And I'm going to call this other one smart object number two. And then again, right click on it and select smart object via copy. So now we should know right away which one is the copy. Here it is over there. Uh, smart object via copy will allow you to, here it is, is this one here, to edit the content of your smart object. So for example, we can now uh, just create, let's say an orange pillow and save it and perhaps create a new layer comp for it just like so and press on save and uh, let's go back into our sofa. Now this is updated, but the other one doesn't get updated. In fact, if we now double click on this over here, we do not even have the orange option. So it's very awesome to create multiple smart objects that are connected to each other. They look the same, but they actually display different content. So if you are, are working with cards, we have two minutes. I don't know if I want to embark in this quick journey to show you how to create the mock-up with the perspective tool. I got cut off yesterday, but let's get going. Let's, let's try to do that super quick. Here, what I'm going to do is to use the uh, crop tool, the perspective crop tool, and simply click on the corner of our card, because I'm saying this copy for is very useful when you create many different cards and click on return. And you will see that all the content appears 
press Command A to select all the pixels and Command C to copy, and then simply undo to go back to your original file and press Command V to copy. So that's the prospective crop. That's exactly that piece of paper that we cropped in the perspective. And all I'm going to do here is to go ahead and convert it into a smart object and press Command T to then be able to uh, move it around, right click on it and select skew. And we should be able to bring it back into whatever was the original position, just like so. And this will work exactly as per our um, pillow composition. Now, actually, I have one minute. Uh, please take your time and really make sure that you create this correctly, uh, that you move it around correctly. I don't know if I'm going to have time to show you precisely how to bring it back inside your, your design, but you got the gist. All you have to do is to match again the look of your original um, of your original uh, design. And again, press Command K to resize it and let's just place it there real quick. I know it's not precise, but I got one minute to go. And again, this is a smart object, so I can go ahead here and paste any text I want. So, for example, I can just paste the logo at the very top bring it here and look it's flat but once i save it it will go back right away in our perspective because we use the perspective tool in order to create our mock-up now unfortunately it's time to go i don't want to get cut off again it was beautiful to be with you stay tuned for more fun at adobe live thank you for joining us and for joining me here at how to it's been a blast thank you so much everybody and i look forward to see you very soon. Stay tuned for more fun here at Adobe Live. Goodbye, everybody.